I came back to do another video that is that goes along with the video that I just done I just dropped called jealousy will bring about judgment uh, I thank you for your dialogue I thank you for your feedback I thank you for the emails I thank you for the inboxes I thank you because I love dialogue I love this so I'm always saying please dialogue with me I say that because I love your feedback I, my husband and I always say in our ministry that we are open book we are you can always come and ask questions you know because nobody ever really teaches us you know how to handle hurt you know especially in church um even though the video was about church as well as the corporate world i, I the most questions that i got was really about the church i have an amazing book out there if you don't know shameless plug church hurt but it helped in this book i'm giving you my perspective of my experience on what i experienced from as a member as a minister's wife as a leader in ministry as a pastor's wife as a bishop's wife i'm giving you all that just a tad bit on bishop but i'm giving i give you all of that in this book so i say that to say this go purchase the book definitely but i say this to say that i said that to say this what happens is uh, one, one of the questions, and really both, I can kind of answer both at one time. Both of the questions were dealing with, you know, what do you do when you're hurt from leadership? In the video, I dealt with Miriam. I dealt with Miriam, and I also dealt with Moses being Miriam leader. Go back and watch it. Great video to watch, uh, dealing with how she was a prophet and how she came against leadership. Again, you can use it for your job as well as, you know, the corporate world, as well as the church, as well as the marketplace, as well as ministry on both. And I was trying to give both perspectives in a small amount of time. So with that said, uh, again, I thank you. I love dialogue. So this is my dialogue to your question, just in case if someone else out there may have the question. Okay, I'm going to answer. Let me ask. Let me. So uh, the question was, you know, what do you do in leadership, meaning pastors? Uh, and I may get ate up for this, but I don't care. This is my video. Come on, praise them. But what do you do like when pastors and leaders and maybe pastor wives, they're the ones that come against you? I think that was one of the questions is, um, if I quit the church and I no longer attend because of leaders, the other question was, you know, what do I do, you know, when it's the leaders that are praying, P-R-E-Y, you know, on the people, you know, what do I do? Um, and this is what I found out. As I was dealing with Mar Miriam, I was dealing with the fact of more of leaders, prophetess, evangelists, and the deacons, and all these people that are in major leadership are coming against the man of God. I shared in my class that I just did called Church Hurt But It Helped, as well as this book, I'm sharing with you the experience of me seeing crookedness happen in the pulpit. Uh, me experiencing uh, hurt as a member, as well as me that probably wasn't walking in love as a pastor's wife, and also me that was, you know, in church cliques as a member, leader, leader, and all that great stuff. So I give you both perspectives because we all make mistakes, we all mess up. Um, nobody, nobody has made it. And here's the thing when it comes to, and I shared this in my class, that. When you join a church, you know, it's very important if you quit the church for that person that said, I quit and I no longer want to go back because of the leaders. Uh, you may have already lost respect for those leaders. OK, so, you, ugh, you know, and the reason why I say you may have lost respect, um, maybe something happened or, you know, you were caught in clicks again. I have a great class. Um, don't make me have to do something for this, but that I did and I might, I don't know, I'm gonna think about something, but I talk about the importance of dating a church. You know, you date a church, nobody ever taught us that. Just like you would date that man, just like you would date, you know, uh, you would Google that job before you just say yes to that job when you know, when you're not begging to look for a job. But there may be a time that you at a point to where you know you need church. What well, is very important to date the church before you just join the church. Google that pastor, learn out about them. I know every pastor gonna get mad at me, but it, they need to Google us and find out who are we? Are you really who you say you are? Um, but even in that state, it's so much that can go with that again. Get with me and we'll work out something. But the thing, even when it goes to that, you gotta understand this, that 
you date the church. You get to know the church. If you quit a church and you no longer go to church, give the church a chance again. Don't just give up because of that leader or the bad experience that you may experience with that leader. I shared this with my ladies tonight in my at the Women of Destiny is that maybe you're going through because God is still trying to strip some stuff from you that has nothing to do with those leaders. Okay, I know. Keep keep listening. Don't stop watching. Maybe it's some stuff that's going on with you. That's what I tell you in this book. That was some stuff that was in within me that really wasn't even going on with the church. I didn't deal with the young girl that was within that that dealt with rejection, that dealt with abandonment, that dealt with um, all this other stuff, depression that was never dealt with. And so because of that, I was bringing that in the church, and I had an expectation on the leaders that they were not able to give me. Okay. But there are some times where you got to know the characteristics of a leader, understanding that the characteristics of a leader is what God has allowed them to do. There is no perfect people, but there are certain characteristics that a leader should carry. And you got to, you just got to know the spirit by the spirit, try to spirit by the spirit. You know, you just got to know. There's just some things that for me, I'm not going to put up with, you know, I just could not tolerate. I can't tolerate uh, a leader that sleeps around on his wife. Sorry. Just, mm -hmm. I've been with my husband 20 years. I'm just, I did just does something to me. Uh, commitment, uh, loyalty is something for me. I'm loyal. So I like other people to be loyal. So yeah, that doesn't work for me. Not that everybody's going to be loyal, but I, when, when we found our second church, I realized this, uh, my spiritual parents right now, this day, one thing about them, they carry the characteristics of God in my eyes. Not in nobody else's, because I didn't care what everybody else got to say. But in my eyes, they did, they do. And that's why I continue to follow them. And that's why they can continue to teach me and hold me accountable because of the lifestyle that they live. You got to know that. Now, if that pastor has gotten on, on you and, and put you in your place and, and rebuked you and you mad, that ain't a good reason to leave, Shelby. You just leave it because of what somebody else said. Or are you looking at that pastor or those leaders through that person's eyes? It could be that. Not for sure. You got to do a self-check on that. You got to make sure that why am I leaving this church? Am I leaving this church because my time is up? Or am I leaving this church because everybody else's time is up? Or am I leaving this church because I have an issue with the pastor or I have an issue with the pastor's wife? It ain't that they done nothing. I just don't like them. That, that's not a good reason. I'm sorry. That ain't a good reason. Maybe God needs you there because there's some more th things he have to mold in you and your time really not up. But, okay, so I said that to say this. The second thing is, okay, what if the pastor is praying or the leaders and the pastor's wife, they're P-R-E-Y on the people and you know that they don't mean them no good. They're, they don't have the characteristics of God. They're not walking in God. My thing is, you got to know a tree by fruit that it bears. If the fruit ain't right, some ain't right. You know, if you just got to know for yourself, self, you got to know the word for yourself. The Bible says, make sure that you rightly divide the word of God for yourself. How do you rightly divide? You know the difference between wrong and right. There's nobody that's watching me right now that don't know when stuff is messed up and ain't right. And there's nobody that's watching me right now that don't know when stuff is right. You know when stuff, you just know. I knew when stuff wasn't right at one particular church. I, no, baby, I'm not finna sit under this because I don't need that to trickle over into my marriage. No, thank you. I don't want that in my marriage. I want to live a healthy life, a healthy marriage. So you just got to know. And the question may be, you know, well, Tanya, what do I do? You know, if I know that the pastor is praying, he's the pastor, not you. I know. Keep watching, keep watching. She's the pastor, not you. You're not the pastor. And if you're not okay with that church, baby, you're not going to be able to eat spiritually from them at all. So you might want to find somewhere that you can grow. You want a Bible-based church that can grow you spiritually, build you spiritually, and you see the evidence of God spiritually. When you don't see the evidence of God because you feel, if you feel stuck, you got to take a look at yourself. Am I the reason why I'm stuck? That's what I had to do at our, our last church. Like, am I the reason why I'm stuck? I found out I was the reason. You'll find out in this book. I was the reason. It had nothing to do with my leaders. It had everything to do with me, even though I was mad. But it had everything to do with me. Not only am I stuck, 
But what was I learning when I first started this church? What made me say yes to this particular church? Did I Am I joining this church because grandma joined? Uh, my mama go here. Uh, this is what a family church is. Or am I going because of my life? I'm seeing the evidence. I'm seeing the fruits of the spirit. I'm seeing I'm, I'm being convicted when I go. And sometimes I leave them mad because I'm so convicted. But it's changing my life. I'm applying what I'm being taught to my life. And I'm seeing my life being transformed. I'm seeing me change. I'm seeing the evidence of God. And I'm not going to allow nothing and nobody to get in the middle of that. Regardless of what these people got to say. I'm going to follow the man and woman of God. Let's say the pastor's wife is being, she's not, she's nasty, she's messy. Whatever the case may be, you know, some of us are, you know, just go through that. But here's the thing, is even with them, you got to know, okay, Lord, is it my job to change them? Or is it my job to be able to allow God to do the change? And I, I share with my people at my church, uh, I never forget one day for Mother's Day, I got up and I said, I thank y'all for being patient with me. Just like God was changing me. He was changing you. He was changing me. So I thank y'all for being patient and taking out the time as I grew and we grew together. I apologize for everything I've done in the past, knowingly and unknowingly, right? Because I that was some mistakes I made. That was some hiccups I made. Uh, because being a pastor's wife, you don't know what that person is going through. Um, and I'm not kudoing no pastor being messy. I'm not kudoing no pastor's wife being mean and nice, nasty. That's not what I'm saying. And there's, I'm not even saying I made it. I still have some stuff I got to work on, you know, as a bishop's wife, even as a pastor's wife, because I'm human. And just like you're growing, you got to give them time to grow. Um, but if they just, if they are, you know, going too deep sleeping around and you know they just you just can't handle it you can't eat from them and when you can't eat you're gonna starve spiritually you need nutrition to do this walk call life you need nutrition i really pray this helped i know i might get knocked out I, yeah i come against every demonic force and everything they try to come against what i'm saying what i'm saying is truth i've seen my bishop and my pastor have been great examples to me and my husband and I will forever say that uh, if they watching I love y'all already know okay I they've been together for 30 plus years 35 years and I've been knowing them for 17 they we have been committed and we have been loyal to them 17 years we may not talk every day I may not see them every day but know that I honor them there have been times people have came against them. There have been times, and I go watch my video, Spiritual Mother, or Spiritual Something. There's a video on my page, on Tanya Hart and YouTube, called Spiritual Mother. What is a spiritual mother? That gives you a breakdown of the importance of having the correct covering. Don't make me write a book on it, okay? But I have. <laughs> Church, everybody help, man. You get... I can't explain it. This book has been life changing. So many testimonials that I have received. Did a class. Excited to say out of 13 people that were in this class, three of them, I'm excited about the three that said, I'm going to give church a chance again after reading your book, after going through your class. So I might do some. I don't know. But I hope this helped for those people, that person that asked, that, that other person that asked. I, I just, I hope this helped. Uh, go see my, go see my, my, you know, what is a spiritual mother video. I give you a detail of mentors and, and, and life coaches and all that. I give you detail because I realized that people have been hurt in the church. And that's really where this book came from was that big video. So go watch it. Uh, but make sure that when you're making a decision, if you're going to, if you quit and you want to go join a church, date that church, get to know that church. Um, I'm going to drop another video here soon. Just a snippet of my classes that I talked about. Dealing with church hurt. Church hurt is real. But one thing about church hurt, it helped you become a better you. You don't realize it yet. I shared one of my ladies on our call tonight, shared this, and I'm done. She said these words. She said, 
you know, I found out I got a job and while working at one job, I wanted another position on the job. But my the supervisor told me, now, if you can't handle this position that you have already, and if you go work in another position, you definitely not going to be able to handle that. So she watched God work on her and she asked God to remove some stuff so that she could get the position. So now she's in the other position. So why did I say that? I said that to say this is that no matter where you are in the corporate world, in church, in your marriage, on, uh, as uh, having homegirls or friends, no matter where you are, no matter where, you're going to always have moments that you need to grow and grow up. And how does that happen? Maybe God had, has allowed you to go through hurt with leaders or hurt within the church or you know you're seeing these pastors that are praying p-r-e-y-i-n-g on people and because of that god has allowed you to see it so that you could be able to help other people but until you can learn how to handle and not be so hurt or i told them this you know it's like once i got to a level that some stuff didn't put me in a fetal position as a pastor's wife in a fetal position to where oh my god why they do that why they don't like me i don't understand oh my, i don't get it right and, and that's dead serious and i'm not being joking about that in fetal positions because i don't what did i do and didn't realize that it had nothing to do with them but everything to do with me because god said i need to grow you up because there's some places i want to take you and there's some people that i'm going to get you to help but if you can't handle the women right now on this level that don't like you can't stand you that don't get along with you you're definitely not going to be able to handle the women on this level where you're dealing with pastor wives bishop wives apostles so i need you to handle that and it wasn't until i could learn how to handle. not saying i mastered it but i could learn how to allow stuff to wipe off of me like water on the back of a duck it just slide off like oh, okay they did that oh, okay all right, one day I can get out of it. Okay, I, okay, Lord, it hurt, but I can get up again. I'm okay. I'm not. I'm not numb. I'm human. Still gonna hurt, but I know to get up quicker and not stay in it for a month or a week, maybe a day or two. But get up, keep it moving. I got greater for you. So I say that to say this: give the church a chance again. Um, if you if you have no longer no no more respect for that pastor, you're gonna cause chaos in that church. Don't go. You're gonna cause chaos because you're gonna see every flaw, every little thing go to another church. But if you love them and you believe in their vision and you believe in where they're going, you stick it out and you ask God to change your heart about them and you walk out the vision that God has called them to do because you don't know what God is changing about those pastors that pastor and his wife God may be molding them and changing them and maybe you're there for the process or maybe you're not I found out at my first church I wasn't there for the process no thank you I went to another church and you know I shared the book I've only been to two churches but I yeah uh -uh. so here's here's the thing you want to get somewhere so you can get rooted and get grounded in the vision. My second church, we got grounded in the vision. Grounded in what he was doing, where they were going, where she was going. Do that. That's that's my, that's the Tanya Nines version. So it goes back to touch my, not by knowing to do my prophet no harm. Don't judge what you don't understand. You don't understand what they're going through. They don't understand what you're going through. It's just learning how to love people for who they are. If you're willing to love, it's about what you're willing to put up with, just like what you're willing to put up with in your marriage. Until next time, I hope that helped. I hope it helped a little bit. If it did, email me, inbox me, whatever. And I would love to, you know, that's it. So get ready for the next woman. Y'all, we talked about a woman tonight. Oh, my God. I can't wait to talk about her. Her name was Elizabeth. But we're not going to talk about her. We're going to talk about tonight we're gonna talk i mean the next time we're gonna talk about leah oh the unwanted so we're gonna talk about her but until then stay blessed in all that you do and go purchase the book church her but it helped as well as the workbook is around here somewhere there's a workbook that goes with it that takes you through the journey of healing properly from church hurt until next time Stay blessed in all that you do. Have a great week.